Realty income is up around 7% over the last month, up from its 52-week lows of $45. But is this a company we should be looking to add more, maybe consider selling, or just damn right holding it? Let's take a look. We're going to also run through to get what we believe to be the latest intrinsic value based on the acquisition of Spirit Realty, including our acceptable buy price. We're also going to take a look at the investor presentations of Realty Income to understand how synergies will be created with their acquisition of Spirit. And we will also just take a look based on the latest investor presentation of whether or not Realty Income is set up for the next five to 10 years and beyond. As always, we will look at their dividend safety, some strong financial metrics of this company, very briefly touching on institutions if they continue to buy or sell, as well as the industry as a whole, how they've progressed over the last five years. And we will very briefly touch upon their strength of the company's balance sheet and their movement based on their December 2023 projected results. Now, the first thing to note for those that are new to the channel or even essentially Realty Income, it is a company that pays dividends every single month and they have been doing this since their 1994 listing on the New York Stock Exchange. And as we can see, they do 105 consecutive quarterly increases since then. And on average, that is growing at 4.3%. If you remember on the channel, we always say to get a minimum of 4% just to keep up in line with inflation. So we can see here in terms of their growth over that period. Now taking a look at the company as a whole year to date, they are down 10%. We do see it at its 52 week low of $45. And we do see currently it offers a yield of 5.4%. Now if you've been holding this over the last 10 years, you would be up around 56%. And we do see it have its all time highs just before that COVID drop at just shy of $80. So let's take a look. We can start off with those financial metrics. So it does have a dividend safety score of 80. It is safe. Market cap of 41 billion, a large cap company. And bear in mind, it will be acquiring Spirit Realty. So these numbers may differ over the next few months. So do go ahead, hit that like and subscribe with the bell button so you are notified when they do officially acquire them so we can run an updated number through. Recessionary dividends, well, they increased the dividend during the 0709 recession. They had pretty much flat sales during this period, but they did also outperform the recession with a negative 43% return versus the S&P's negative 55. As mentioned, 4% over the last year, 3% over the last five years, and over the last 20 years on average at around 5%. So you are looking in with realty income monthly dividends that are paying at least in line with inflation or more and currently a yield of over five percent not too bad especially for those that like monthly income dividend growth street they are a dividend aristocrat they have increased those dividends over the last 25 years or more in terms of dividend yield theory well for those that are new it states that the company is undervalued when the current yield sits above the five-year average so we have our first sign of undervaluation Keeping in mind, we're not looking at any of these models in isolation and we will draw conclusions towards the end of the episode. Forward P to AFO ratio 13.9 versus the five year average, another sign of undervaluation. And we can see it is slightly lower than the sector PE for real estate or P to AFO at 14.2. Now, typically on the channel, we focus on the free cash flow payout as the earnings is susceptible to manipulation by management through accounting. But for REITs, we focus on adjusted FFO funds from operations. As free cash flow, it is more volatile in REITs. Below 90% is our target for REITs as a whole. And what we can see, it has pretty much declined from 2013 with 2022 at 76%, 2023 expected 76%. So that is positive to note. In terms of the adjusted funds from operations, well, I do like to see consistent increases year on year, which is what you get with realty income. You pretty much know what you're getting. And we can see 2023 expected to increase again to to four dollars so that is quite positive sales growth five to ten percent moderate growth for REITs we can see realty income exactly that year on year 2022 incredible at 60 percent 2023 24 percent expected and I can't wait personally for 2024 and beyond to see how that acquisition will grow their top line as well as their adjusted funds from operations per share Numerically speaking, for those that like to see the numbers, 780 million in 2013, 3.34 billion in 2022. Shares outstanding. Now, do note this for REITs, we do see this very regularly. It is common when they issue shares to dilute your position as a shareholder. It is very common. But one thing I would say is that realty income 
do essentially dilute your position a lot quicker than other REITs out there. So do bear that in mind. ROIC, now what we look for is 3 to 5% in the REITs. Basically, I am looking for companies that are able to effectively allocate their capital quite well and efficiently. 2022, 3%, 2023, expected 3%. I would like to see at least 4% that we have seen for the large part of the last 10 years. Operating margin as well, pretty much nearly 50% consistently over the last 10 years. It did dip in 2022, expected to be up again in 2023. Something to keep an eye on and hope that we do see the high 40s that we have seen over the period. Net debt to earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, amortization. Remember, it shows us two things, balance sheet strength, as well as essentially the dividend safety. These show us the number of years it would take the company to pay off all of their debt net of cash on hand. I would like to see 5.5 as a maximum, 6.21 in 2022, positive to note 2023 is expected to be lower, with 2024 even lower at 4.74, so something just to bear in mind for realty income. Now we can take a look quickly at institutional ownership, it sits at around 79%, 1.86 billion of shares being sold over the last 12 months, with a lot more being bought by these institutions at 5.5 billion over the same period. And we can see the last four quarters more green than red, meaning that the institutions do like realty income in their portfolio and they have been adding more than they have been selling. But as always, don't copy what they do. Always do your own due diligence and have your own investment thesis for each company you have in your portfolio. Very quickly then, of something just to point out in terms of realty income, 13.4% they have compounded annually since their 1994 New York Stock Exchange listing, as we can see their total return. Now, 26 of those 27 years, they have had positive earnings per share growth, which is very strong, and around a median AFFO per share growth of 5%. 4.3%, as we said at the beginning, in terms of those dividends, and they are, as we mentioned, a dividend aristocrat. So lots of positives about this company. One thing that I do want to point out that maybe you don't see regularly on these realty income videos is that they also have a European portfolio. Those that live in Europe will know these names. They also have, as we can see, their clients such as B&Q, Asda, Sainsbury's, Tesco, Careful, which are quite big players in their own separate industries. So that is positive to see. It is not just solely focused on one essential country. Now, when we take a look at Realty Income and their acquiring of Spirit Realty, what we can see in terms of their industries, their clients, what we see here is the orange depicts essentially Realty Income with the other blue in fact being Spirit's contribution. Now, what we can see, just one thing to note here, 14 of their top 20 clients do overlap on a combined basis as we can see here with the blue and the orange. But what they're doing with this essential acquisition is reducing their exposure in 18 of their current top 20 clients. We see here in terms of Dollar General, Walgreens, they are still Realty Income's top clients and they still will be. And we have other ones here like Dollar Tree as well as FedEx and Lifetime which will just increase their essential revenue. In terms of the industries, we can see here nine of the 10 industries overlap, but they are also exposure. They are reducing their exposure from nine out of the top 10. So it is positive to see there will be a lot of diversification, but also they will be strengthening in terms of their clients. A lot of people may actually be worried about that. They may look at Dollar General, the Walgreens, and if you look at their share price over the last few years, it hasn't been too great and worry about them becoming bankrupt. But personally, I don't see that being the case. We have mentioned and discussed this on previous episodes and they do have a lot of strong clients. They have FedEx, they have the Wynn Resorts, they have 7-Eleven, which in my case, or my opinion, I do believe these are very strong companies and clients to have. They also have CVS, which for a long time, a lot of people were worried about them. You have the European ones that we mentioned earlier as well. Now, in terms of their performance of the REIT industry as a whole, we have companies that I'm sure you've heard of, Simon Property Group, Kimco, Federal Realty, NNN REIT. Most of these we have also reviewed on the channel. Now, year to date, it hasn't performed favorably for the company, down 5.73%, the worst performing in the industry, with the majority of the other ones bringing out positive returns. Now, over the last five years, what we can see for realty income, they are up 15.81%. Again, not the greatest, not what you would like to see from any company over the last five years. But do remember, past performance is never an indicator for the future. So it shouldn't put you off investing in a company. But as always, you should always have your own due diligence, not just looking at past data, but also forward guidance as well. Now, in terms of the strength of the balance sheet, what we like to see, total cash versus total debt. 
Their cash position went from 10 million in 2018 to 344 in their latest report, so it has grown significantly. And when we look at their total debt numerically and directionally, it has gone up around three times, 6.5 billion to 21 billion, which is common in REITs. We do see their total debt increase as they do take on more positions. And that is something that is quite common, and we did analyze their net debt to EBITDA. And for now, it looks like that dividend is safe, as well as a strong balance sheet for the future. Very quickly then, on terms of their income statements, 1.3 billion in 2018. As we saw, we look for 5 to 10 cent for REITs, 3.3 billion in 2022. So it has grown, and on top of that, consistent increases year on year. But look at this trailing 12 months for December 2023. We are expecting this again to be another good strong year for realty income and another increase to their top line. Then in terms of their bottom line net income, 364 million in 2018, 870 million in December 2022. We do see some inconsistencies. It did increase to 2019 before decreasing to 2021, but it then pick, did pick up and we are expecting it to pick up, although very slightly again in December 2023. So both top line and bottom line for realty income are increasing. We do see some inconsistencies, however, over the movements between the years. Now, in terms of the valuation, we can run through our valuation model. As always, if you enjoy the content, values being provided, smash that like button, hit the subscribe and bell button so you are continually notified of these videos as they drop. And if you do want to grab a copy of the intrinsic value calculator to get to the acceptable buy price of companies in your own portfolio or on your watch list, do click on that pinned comment below. Now, Graham's valuation is typically our first model that we analyze, but due to the fact that it isn't essentially relevant for REITs, we don't tend to include this. So starting off, we have the REITs multiple valuation model, companies in a similar sector that we analyze with their P to FO multiples. We get the average P to FO and that of realty incomes to get a stock price for the REITs multiple valuation of $70. Now, when we take a look at that, that is some very nice upside to the current trading price and slightly above that 52 week high with our first sign now of undervaluation. Bearing in mind though that we're not looking at any of these models in isolation and we will draw conclusions towards the end. We then have the DDM model where we have the yearly dividends with the average growth rate. Now forward looking, I've gone 3.25%, pretty conservative in my opinion, given they have on average compounded that dividend by 4.3% over the last, essentially since the New York Stock Exchange listing from 94. But as always, if you grab a copy of the model, you can play around with these numbers based on your own investment thesis. This gives a DDM price of $67, pretty much at the 52 week high and around $10 upside to each share. So again, some nice undervaluation. We then have the DCF model with the free cash flows year on year, the average growth rate and that discount rate. We get the present value of future free cash flows and terminal value. Add together with the cash, subtract total debt, get to the equity value, divide by shares outstanding to give a DCF price of $65.50. Again, near enough to that 52 week high to show signs of undervaluation to the current trading price. Now, the intrinsic value for realty income in today's episode will be the average of these three models, and this comes to $67.51. Now, the current price just under $57, although it does fluctuate a few cents here and there. Typically, we start off with a margin of safety of 10% if we believe it has a wide moat, strong financial metrics, good forward-looking data, and it is a buy up to $61 if you believe that to be the case. At 15% margin of safety, it is a buy up to $57, and it really does depend on what price you are looking to add. At a 20% margin of safety at around $54, which as we can see is still well within that 52 week range. Now, personally, I do believe that realty income will only go up in price, especially as next year we are expecting three to four interest rate cuts. And I think not only that will be a positive sign for realty income, which has been hammered this year, but also for the REIT industry as a whole. A lot of REITs, I do believe, will have a very strong 2024 where they did fail in 2023. Now, personally, I could see people buying this with a margin of safety of 15 cent at the current trading price. But personally, I will be looking to add if it does come down to around $54, $55 to a position which is already quite large in my own portfolio percentage wise. Wall Street, what do they say? Well, they see some nice upside to the current trading price at around $63. So in conclusion, for realty income, we see around 15% margin of safety based on the current trading price, with Wall Street seeing around 10% upside. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Is realty income one you're looking to buy, hold, or even sell? And don't forget, smash that like button if you've enjoyed today's episode. Hit the subscribe and bell button so you're continually notified of these videos as they drop. And finally, if you do want to grab a copy, click on that pinned comment so you can get to the intrinsic value and acceptable buy price of companies in your own portfolio.